Welcome to the conference. Please enter the conference ID, followed by the pound key. Thank you. Guest ID accepted.
Good morning, everyone. This is Amy Wenslow. I'm getting us started this morning. I'm really excited to be here. Um, it was such a fulfilling weekend. So one second. We'll uh, be starting in one minute. Okay, everybody, I am, uh, we've got our recording going, and this is Amy Wenslow. I'm really glad to be here and to be sharing some extra wisdom that I picked up from Jack Canfield on Friday of last week. Jack is a best-selling author internationally, and you've probably all heard of his books if you haven't at least read them. Um, so... Let's dive right in here. I see we've got, let's see, Florida, uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, California, uh, looks like Washington, D.C., maybe Seattle, uh, Washington as well. So, wow, people from around the country dialing in and, oh, Canada just popped in as well. So, when I was uh, working last week, I found myself feeling a little drained and feeling a little, not frustrated, but just kind of like, oh, will this ever end, right? There's that energy that, that can sneak in. And when I was thinking about it, I was like, what's missing? What did I used to do that I'm not doing now? And in addition to some self-care, like doing my morning yoga and things, I had added that back in. But I also realized that I was missing going to a few events, not all the time, but just enough to have like a new idea and a new approach and a new insight into business on an ongoing basis. So I've been listening to some Audible books and different podcasts, and we've been doing a lot of growth, and I found myself feeling depleted. So on Thursday, I was talking with a dear friend of mine, and I said, you know, I think I need to go to an event. And she said, oh, well, you know, I'm going to hear Jack Canfield speak next, uh, <laughs> you know, in like 12 hours, 24 hours, I guess it was. And would you like to go? I can get another ticket. And I said, yes. And my heart said yes before my mouth could even get it out. And I, that's because I've heard Jack speak before. He was around an event that I used to go to five times a year. And there was always good insight, and I've had the chance to speak with him one-on-one -on -one before. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I'm in. And we rearranged the schedule so that client projects could still be moving forward so that I could get the replenishment and the soul nourishment as an entrepreneur and as a business owner that can be so vital when you're at a quantum leap kind of moment. So I want to share a little bit about what I experience a, a quantum leap to feel like and be like and, and what they are. And then I'll talk a little bit about some insights and how to make them happen more often with greater ease and greater grace. So a quantum leap is a giant leap that isn't linear in your business or a result that you want. So it's not a linear thing. It's not, oh, you did A, so you got B. No, it's, you know, you've been building platform and building momentum and, you know, doing consistent work, and all of a sudden the next thing shows up and it's, bigger than you would have imagined or conceived of on your own, right? So a quantum leap, if you're a Star Trek fan like my husband, um, a quantum leap is kind of like going through one of those wormholes where all of a sudden you pop out on the other side of something and it happened at this light speed experience level, right? So that's a quantum leap. Now, quantum leaps in your business can be, you know, you're, you're going along and you're doing little engine that could, going up the mountain, going up the mountain, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, and all of a sudden a massive deal shows up. Or all of a sudden you get the, the big platform influencer that you wanted. 
or all of the sudden X happens, right? So it's got this um, this moment that feels like overnight sensation uh, from the outside, but really has come from the consistent, persistent work that you've been doing and the foundation you've been laying and all of those things. But it can feel like a real grind when you're in that just needing to do the persistent, consistent work. So when you are looking at this, there's a couple things that make it easier. And it's, it happens all the time for product business as well as other kinds of businesses that we want – well, let me back up for a second. There is a place of business and, and emotional maturity that moves us out of magical thinking into reality, like how do you blend the goal and the intention that you have and the speed that you want with what's real in a day. Okay, does that make sense? I'll, I'll say a little bit more about this. So quantum leaps come from the idea that something bigger is possible, right? That's, that it's possible to get that large star who, to be an influencer for you or that it's possible for you to get this account. So a quantum leap would be like that aha moment in the invention process, right, where all of a sudden you go like, oh, I could do it this way. And it takes you in a new direction that opens up markets and expands everything. So it starts with the idea of what's possible. And then there is the moment where you have the vision of what it looks like done, right? And this is a very, very interesting moment and process to put yourself in. And then there's the persistent, consistent daily action so that you're not in magical thinking. Magical thinking is just um, this place of, oh, you just want to be rescued from whatever the problem is, or you just want, oh, all of a sudden, you know, you're just going to be on stage doing X, Y, Z thing or whatever, right? That's kind of magical thinking if you've not been in action about it, right? So you have to blend that possibility moment with the consistent action. And it's going to look like a sudden overnight success potentially from the outside when really so much has been seeded under the ground over time and watered and nurtured and, you know, you're continuing to tend it, right? So the, the big piece is what's the shift that you want and how do you stand in that? And when I was listening to Jack on Friday night, you have to understand, Chicken Soup for the Soul books, right? I think now there are 85 books in the series. They've been sold in so many countries, it's insane. Um, but what most people do not know is that Chicken Soup for the Soul, when Mark and Jack were originally uh, presenting it to publishers, was rejected by 144 publishers right? 144 rejection letters. Yeah, 144. Now, the rest of the, the story is pretty fascinating because the 145th publisher also rejected it. But for some reason, Jack and Mark had the insight. And they said, we don't even know why we thought to ask, or didn't think to ask the sooner. We asked the publisher, what would it take for that to become a yes? So, the publisher said, well, I need to know that I could sell 20,000 copies to commit to publishing this. So Jack and Mark went back to their office, and they wrote up a simple order form. And for the next couple of months, every time they would speak, they had this order form on everybody's chair. And the order form said, you know, name, address, all that stuff, phone number. And there was a checkbox, and it said, I promise to purchase at least one copy of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And they collected those at the end of every speaking event for a few months. And at the end of that time, they had 20,000 order forms. And so they put them all in bankers' boxes, and they took them to the publisher, and they had a meeting with him, and they said, here are the order forms for 20,000 copies. Um, you just need to contact those people. And the publisher said, okay. 
and he went through with the deal. All right. So to date, right now, in one country alone, we'll say China, because China has sold 350 million copies of Chicken Soup for the Soul book, right? And in China, what most people don't know is that books are almost never read by one person. They're read by three or four because they get passed around. So that's conservatively 700 million readings of the book. Crazy, right? From a book that had been rejected by 144 publishers before finding one and, and having to massage the deal with the 145th one. Now, I don't know about you, but probably around rejection letter 50 or 60, I might have really started to go, mm, I don't know if I should do this, et cetera, et cetera. So this idea of persistence and tenacity and of asking a powerful question, what would it take for this to be a yes? And coming up with, well, what is the criteria of a yes was really instrumental in their success. Now, the story goes on because Jack is also a big believer in vision boards and affirmations. And he said, this is the affirmation that I was using at the time, and it was, I am so happy and grateful that I am now depositing a $1 million royalty check from Chicken Soup for the Soul. So he shared that, and he said, now, the next image that I show you is the result of that. And he puts this check image up on the screen, and it's a check for $1.1 million made out to him from the publisher. And the publisher added a little smiley face in his signature on the check. And Jack said, do you want to know why he added the, the smiley face? And of course, we're all, yes, you know, of course. And he said, it's because it was the first million-dollar royalty check that publisher had ever written to an author. So get this, this is from a book that was rejected by 144 publishers. Not only that, the next thing he said, and by the way, this check was for three months of sales. It wasn't even a full year's worth of sales. So when you are in your project, you're going to hear no's. And statistically at this point in time, it takes about 12 exposures for someone to say yes to buying a product, to yes to buying the new car they want, yes to buying a service, yes to. So it takes repeated contacts, right? And even in the, the online world of marketing, it takes this. And so you have to actually get good at hearing rejections, turn them around, reframing it, keep going, adjusting, etc. Now, some people would say that it's a quantum leap to go from rejection, rejection, rejection to, okay, 20,000 copies sold, okay, a million dollar, 1.1 million dollar royalty check. That's a quantum leap in the grand scheme. It didn't take that long from the moment the 145th publisher said yes to the check happening. But there was this whole process before that that sometimes in our brain we discount or we get discouraged by. So I wanted to share that story so that you would understand a little bit about this process. Um, so when you are creating a vision or you have a vision of, for your business, it's really important to move the vision from a vision that is out there in the future to something you can act on now. And we have some technologies and ways that I do that. Um, and there were a couple that were added on Friday night. I was like, oh, my gosh, I never thought to do it that way. That's brilliant. Um, so no matter where you are, there's always something new to learn, um, especially if you're actively engaged in questions. And I had the good fortune to be able to hang out with Jack for a little bit after the speaking gig because of some other connections that we have. And, you know, we were talking about, community and putting yourself in the right environments, um, because where I first met him, like I shared, is this conference that I would go to consistently. And so this idea of community and knowing people and being collaborative is really, really important. It creates a lot of quantum leap energy. So with that, I'm going to open up the phone lines so we can take some questions. Um, you can press 
I think it's star two today, to raise your hand um, and ask your question. And I'm happy to share more stories. There are so many great examples of ways to rekindle yourself, no matter if you think you're too young or you think you're too old. I have examples to cover any question you have about your ability to create exactly what you want and to create from a place of you've never done it before into it is what you do every day. So for the phone lines, press star two to raise your hand. We do have the webcast Q&A open. You can press, uh, you can just type your questions in over on the Q&A and that'll let me know that you have a question. Um, I do see we have webcast listeners today. So press star two to raise your hand. And while everybody's queuing up their questions, I want to share this. You know, one of the things that I'm going to talk about over in our podcast version of, the, of this is this idea of a dream 100 and of um, kind of having a little bit of a bucket list of who you want to be, what you want to do, what you want to have in your life, and how to have that happen faster. So years ago, I wrote one of these lists after reading – uh, the Aladdin Factor, and that is another book by Jack Canfield. And I was in my 20s when I did it, and things started happening really pretty quickly that the list was coming true. Um, one of the things on the list was to walk on the Great Wall of China. I did that, and the way that that happened is just in incredibly awesome. It ended up costing me a grand total of about $200 of my own money to be able to do that and spend time in China and um, so I can tell you more about that, but this idea of having a list and, and really deciding who you want to be and what you want to do in the world and any cool things that you want to have and writing them down actually really does work. However, there's one extra step that will put it on light speed for you, and that is posting it so other people can see it. Don't necessarily have to post it so they can comment on it, but so that they can see it. Um, Lou Holtz does this. If you're a football fan, you might know him from his coaching days at Notre Dame. He had his Notre Dame team do this exercise, and so it can be incredibly powerful. I'll be sharing a little bit about that on the podcast this week, so go over there to listen to that. Um, and the story uh, – I'm picking and choosing the stories. This is one, again, from – Jack's event on Friday night. There is a sheep farmer in Australia. And I'm sharing this story specifically because I think there are some people who listen in and ask questions here and that we work with that haven't done their business before, may not have owned a business before. Um, and then we have people that are really experienced in business that we'll get something out of this too. There was a sheep farmer in Australia, his name was Cliff, and he had a 2,000 acre sheep farm ranch. And they didn't have the money for four wheel drive or horses or, any, or anything like that. But And that'll become important in one second here. So he decided at age 61 that he wanted to run this ultra long distance race. I believe if I've got the distance right, it was 575 miles. And so he'd never been a distance runner. He'd never been coached by a distance runner. He'd never been on a cross-country team. He had never done any of this kind of thing before. But he decided, he got it in his head that he wanted to do this. So the day of the race came, and he shows up to register, and he goes to the registration desk, and the other runners were kind of, really dismissing him. They were laughing at him a little bit, and the race organizers were kind of worried about even letting him run the race because he didn't look like a distance runner. He didn't have the right gear. Matter of fact, he didn't have any running shoes. He showed up to run this race in work boots, like rain work boots for mud and overalls, and I mean, he did not look like the other runners at all. And he's 61 and he's never run anything. And the race organizers asked him, you know, what makes you think you can do this race? You know, they were kind of worried about him having a heart attack or something while he's out running this and it's going through 
wilderness areas and it's not a lot of people and all this. And he said, well, I think I can do this because, you know, when a storm is coming, I have to run around with my dogs and collect all the sheep from the ranch. And I'm up running with the dogs for like two or three days sometimes to get all the sheep to safety. But I think I, I think I can do this. So they let him register, and he starts racing. And he's racing with the weirdest shuffle kind of run they've ever seen, right? He's just kind of shuffling, shuffle jogging running. And they're like, well, that doesn't look right. But, he, you know, he keeps up. And the first day, he's way behind by the end of the day. So what happens, though, is because he's way behind, he doesn't see that the other runners have gone to sleep and that they – that there's nobody to tell him that that's what you're, quote, supposed to do is you're allowed to rest and sleep as you want during this race. And the race takes place over the course of like a week, right? And so he doesn't stop when the other runners stop. He kept running, and he only slept for like an hour or two the first night. And the next day, he's still kind of by himself, and he doesn't realize that, you know, you're supposed to get – like six or seven hours of sleep, and so he keeps running, and he only sleeps for a couple hours the second night. And here's the the gem in this. Because he didn't know and there was nobody to tell him he couldn't do it, he pretty much kept running the whole time. He ended up cutting off days off of the record time for this race. Right? He won as somebody that they didn't think would even finish at age 61, his first ever race. He won because he just did it and believed he could, right? So the next year, he enters again, and he finished 12th. And the reason he finished 12th is that 11 other runners stayed up and ran, and they adopted his shuffle run because they found that they could do it for longer amounts of time, right? So sometimes it doesn't look like how it's going to look. Sometimes, um, you know, you need some guidance, and other times you need to follow what you know you're capable of and keep doing and keep stretching and keep growing yourself. That's just one example. There's a lot of examples I can give you, but so if you are thinking, I don't know how, I don't know what, at some point you need to, quote, register for your version of the race and go and do, right? Because that's the, that's the only game there really is. So with that, if you have a question, press star two, and that will raise your hand so I know you've got a question. And then on the webcast. Let me just go over here and check our, our Q&A box. Okay. Got it. All right. So here's the question from the webcast. I love this idea of quantum leaps. How do I do it from the beginning stages? Okay. So from the beginning stage, you actually do what everybody hears about is called begin with the end in mind. One of the first questions I'm always asking anybody on a discovery call with me or, and I do those for for free. So if you're on a discovery call and we're considering working together, one of the first questions that I'm going to ask is what are you trying to create? If, If we worked together and I taught you everything I know from 20-some years' experience in consumer product business and doing big lines, all this stuff. If I taught you everything I know and the year was an amazing success for you and we were sitting in and we were having a coffee, what would you be able to tell me had happened in your personal and professional life so that you knew it was a great decision, right? So start with the end in mind. And sometimes you, you do want to chunk it down and say, well, at the end of a year, it'd be this, or five years, it'd be that, or three years, it'd be this. So that you set a rudder and, a, well, what is it I'm trying to cause, right? Start with that. And then um, there are some exercises and things that we do that put you in a future moment of that's done, and now tell me what 
was there, right? And you can also notice when you have the big goal out there or the big thing you're trying to cause, sometimes you can ask yourself the question of what connections or relationships or resources do I have towards that that haven't been fully utilized, right? Because sometimes you forget. I mean, I forgot that I was interviewed by Intuit and that they made half an hour of interview footage available. I forgot to tell anybody about it. It's really good content, I, and it's very authentic and kind of cool, you know. I mean, Intuit interviewed me, but I forgot to tell anybody, right? Completely forgot we even had it until about three weeks ago. Um, so sometimes there's a resource you've forgotten about or you don't realize and if it's one that you don't see, it takes someone outside of you asking the question. So that's a, a place to start. So I hope that helps you. And let me go back over here to our phone lines. Great. Oh, wow, we've got a bunch of people today. Um, so I'm curious, what what it is you need for your business, really? Because this is here to serve you. That's why we do these. These are my my community creation, right? And so what serves you? What do you need next for your business? Do you need a quantum leap? Do you want one? Or, or do you want to just keep plodding along and um, see where you get, right? That's not usually a good way to go. Usually if you're on a trip or a journey, you want to decide your destination. Decide where you want to be. Decide and choose it because in the choosing process, there will be um, things that you may give up in order to get something that you really want that's better or bigger or different. Um, there's going to be behaviors that work better than others. Like this week, I'm actually doing a podcast on some pricing strategies, so you can watch the podcast for that. Um, we just did one on branding was a couple of weeks ago. We did a two-part series over in the podcast about that. So there's a lot of content, and stringing it together is really important. So um, what I want to say to you is this. Whatever you are creating, whatever stage your business is in, the game is to keep creating. And it can be tough. I get that, right? Like, I've gone through moments where it's like, oh, if I have to do this one more time, uh, you know. But then something magical and beautiful happens out of it. So it's really important to keep yourself excited, to keep yourself engaged in the process of building your business, of licensing your product, of moving the conversation around your product and your creativity forward, right? It's really, really, really important because it is what will help feed your soul and have your creativity come fully to life, which is really what my business is about, right? That's what we're up to as a game. So um, listen to the podcast for more about product business. And before I wrap up um, for today, I'm going to go over to our Q&A one more time. Great. Awesome. And then the phone lines press star two. This is last call for questions. I think we've got a bunch of people. So um, we've got Texas, New York City, North Carolina, California, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Um, looks like Washington is still here, New Jersey. So I'm curious, what kind of questions would you ask if you knew to ask something? What would you be asking for? Because that's one of the success principles we were talking about on Friday night is ask, 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 ask. Make requests is one of the main success principles. There are 23. If you want, pick up um, Jack's book, The Success Principles. It's in its 10th anniversary, so there's a brand new edition out. But this ability to ask it's really important. It's really, really important. And so everyone hears this at the same time. Uh, I have a couple of things that we're working on. The people in our mastermind group know about some of them. 
um, there is a large project that we're putting together that is going to be really, really spectacular. It involves me making a lot of requests of different people, guests, promoter, you name it. There will be a lot of asks going on. And um, the ability to ask and enroll people in your vision is really important in your business. So um, if you'd like to participate in the, the project and you'd like to be promoted as part of it, you can certainly do that. Um, we are doing that with clients, so you can join the product mastermind. This is a group of people that I hold so near and dear to my heart. They're really fabulous, and we've been working to co-create a couple of things behind the scenes with them. So um, it, they will be getting included in this new event that we're creating, and some of our one-on-one -on -one clients will be there as well, and, and you'll get to hear from them. But what I want to say to you is that you are meant to be doing what you're doing, right? You are meant to be creating something new and fresh and exciting and different for yourself, for your family, and for the people who would buy your products. With that, everyone, please go listen to the podcast, share it. Um, I would love to have your help spreading the reach of it. And also, when we announce the next uh, event that we're doing, this project, it will be very clear to you. And I would really appreciate your help spreading the word about that as well. If you're interested in joining the product mastermind, please call Jeff and we can start a conversation. We do make sure that everybody's a good fit so that everyone in the group is collaborative and supportive and that the group moves forward in a gorgeous way. So you can reach Jeff at 626-709-3850. Again, 626-709-3850 if you want to talk about joining the mastermind group. Um, you can also find out information about, about it at productstoprofits.com slash mastermind. So productstoprofits.com slash mastermind is where you can find out a little bit more detail. And then you can talk with Jeff and we'll have a conversation. So with that, everybody, I'm going to open up the line so we can all say a quick goodbye and, and get on with the rest of a fabulous day. Who wants to say goodbye? Thank you, Amy. Bye, Amy. Positivity. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Tony. I've got your email. Bye, I'm Amy. replying to you, okay? Okay. Bye, Dale. <laughs> Bye, Bye Amy. Mike. Bye, Robbie. Bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs> bye, every bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, Amy. The conference is now completed. Goodbye. Welcome to the conference. Please enter the conference ID, followed by the pound key. Thank you. Guest ID accepted.